The following is a special Wayne Hills Television Sports Presentation. Hello and welcome to the Gifford Gymnasium here at Wayne Hills High School for today's North 1 Group 3 state quarterfinal matchup between your Wayne Hills Patriots and the West Milford Highlanders. I'm John Vitas alongside Anthony Scadillo. Anthony, you excited for tonight's big game? John, I'm extremely excited. It's good to see some high-powered offense. It's going to be great. Now let's take a look at the brackets for the North 1 Group 3 state playoffs where tonight, of course, Wayne Hill is playing West Milford. As I mentioned, the winner will play the winner of Mount Olive and Sparta on March 7th. Now, Mount Olive already played a game in the state tournament where they beat Wayne Valley 45-39 uh, excuse me, in a play-in game. So now Mount Olive will take on Sparta tonight. Like I mentioned, Wayne Hills will play the winner if they can get past West Milford tonight. John, it would have been nice to see in a Wayne Hills-Wayne Valley matchup like last year, but obviously Mount Olive was too much for them. Now we're going to look on the left side of the bracket now where Ramapo will be taking on Teaneck and Passaic Valley will play Old Japan, and the winner of those games will also play on March 7th in the semifinals, and we'll see who will come out of that side as well as the left side to play in the state championship game March 10th at JFK High School in Patterson at 7 p.m. Now, if Wayne Hills is lucky enough, they'll be able to get into that game, but now let's take a look at the starting lineups for Wayne Hills. We got some special graphics set up for tonight. As you will see, Chris Fonte, this big 6'7 center for Wayne Hills, averaging eight points a game, 80 blocks on the season, averaging over three blocks per game, 127 rebounds. He's been a force in the middle all season. Yeah, John, when you're that tall, it's really hard to get around, and, you know, it really establishes a defensive presence. Now, the f enough forward for Wayne Hills, Joe Russo. He can hit threes. He steps up in big games, as you see, averaging 14 points per game this season, 191 rebounds, so he can do things inside and outside for Wayne Hills. It'll, he'll have to play a big part tonight. Yeah, he's just a fantastic shooter, John. I mean, he's lights out at times. And next we're going to look at the other forward, or a guard, more, more of a guard, of course, Steve Lacarica, the big sharpshooter, another sharpshooter for Wayne Hills, averaging 19 points per game. Their leading scorer shoots 85% from the line. He knows how to draw fouls. He gets assists. He gets all over the court. But he has, he has a little problem in big games. We'll talk about that in, in momentarily. But your thoughts on Lacarica? John... Lacarica is such a fantastic player. I mean, he has lacked some big game presence, but he is just such a great shooter and distributes the ball fantastically. Now, the next two guards you're going to see here on our telecast, Justin Horahan and Travis Delavope. We'll start off with Horahan, averaging five points per game, 78 assists. Both Delavope and Horahan are more of ball handlers. They're not too much of scorers. Horahan averages five points per game, like I mentioned, as well as Delavope. I mean, both these guys have had huge shots in games and have really saved this, team's at this team at times. You know, just great ball handers, all around great players. Now, as you see the stats for Travis Delavope, a little bit more than Horahan, 7.5 points per game, 39 steals on the season. I believe that leads the team. But now this, of course, is a big game, state playoffs, quarterfinal matchup. There's a ton of pressure. The Goonies will be here in full force, probably will be a sellout crowd. It's going to be an electric atmosphere. How does Wayne Hills players not think about that and, and handle the pressure and just play another game. Well, John, in a game like this, you have to stick to your game plan. Don't stray away from what you do. Wayne Hills is a you know shooting team, and they can't stray away from that. I mean, at times, they can be streaky. But, you know, when they get hot, you can't stop them. And they also have Chris Fonte in the low post. You know, if your shooting's not there, get it to him, and he does a great job. Yes, Chris Fonte does establish himself down low in most games they play. But one guy they're going to need tonight to step up is the leading scorer, Steve Lacarica. He's had trouble in big games. Last year against Valley, he didn't even break 10 points. Same thing. I know he was sick, but in the county game this year against PCT, he didn't score too much either. How can he tune out a big game like this and really uh, focus on just the, the rim, not worry about anything else going on, and, and put up a big big 30-point effort like he does against NBIL teams? Well, what he has to do is just keep shooting. I mean... He is probably the streakiest shooter on the team, but when he is hot, you cannot stop him. He will make five, six in a row. But it's more than just shooting for him. 
when he is on the floor, he brings a presence to this team where he gets double teamed. And, you know, people always have their eyes on him, and he allows other people to get open. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. All things run through Steve Lacarica, who can be lethal from, that, from outside. If he can hit his shot, like you said, he's a streaky shooter, but if he can hit the shots, Wayne Hills will have an excellent chance to win this game. But if he doesn't, Wayne Hills is going to have to rely on Russo and Fonte down low. Now, your key player for tonight's game, who do you, who do you think needs to step up for Wayne Hills in order to win? Well, I think it's going to be Chris Fonte. If, if you're able to get it into the low post to Chris Fonte and, and get rebounds, offensive and defense, there's no way you can stop this team because even if they are missing shots, if you get rebounds, you could get it back out. And, you know, I think that's a huge component to this game. Well, I'm going to go back to Steve Lacarica as my key player. I've talked about it so far in this Open the most, but Lacarica is going to have to hit his shots tonight. I mean, Horahan and Delavope, you can't rely on them to score. They're great ball handlers. They're great guards, but they're not going to put up 30 points. Steve Lacarica scored 25 points in the second half alone against Northern Highlands. If he can put up that kind of effort tonight, Wayne Hill should be able to move into the state semifinals. Well, that just, that'll just about do it for our pregame show. We'll be back after this break with your starting lineups for Mr. Mezzi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Wayne Hills High School's Gifford Gymnasium for tonight's North One Group Three state playoff game between the number five seed and visiting Highlanders of West Milford High School and the home team and number four seed home team Patriots of Wayne Hills. And the NJSIAA continues to remind us with the following announcement. Spectators are to remain in the stands at all times. Additionally, NJSIAA regulations state that any negative comments directed at opposing cheerleaders, players, coaches, or officials, as well as opposing spectators are unacceptable and will be cause for immediate ejection from this gymnasium. We are also reminded that state law has designated this a smoke-free campus. Accordingly, smoking is not permitted on school property. The NJSIAA and the administrators of both schools encourage supporting the team of your choice while respecting the opposition. Thank you for your cooperation and enjoy the game. The officials in tonight's game are Luis Gonzalez and Mike Rittenauer. And introducing the coaching staffs for the visiting Highlanders head coach John Fink and his assistants James McDermott, Ken Canale, Paul Bonney, and Matt Conlon. And for the home team Patriots head coach, Dr. James Catalano, 
and his assistants, John Goldstein and Kevin Batty. And now for the starting lineups for the visiting Highlanders, senior guard number one, Mac Mirando, number one. Senior guard number 33, Rob Nyland, number 33. Senior guard number 15, Nick Solicito, number 15. Senior forward number four, Chad Hauser, number four. And senior forward number 42, Jason Sothman, number 42. And for the home team Patriots, Senior guard number 20, Travis Della Volpe, number 20. Senior guard number 30, Steve Lacarica, number 30. Senior guard number 14, Justin Hurahan, number 14. Senior forward number 41, Joe Russo, number 41. And junior center, number 50, Chris Fonte, number 50. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you now please rise as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem by Wayne Hill sophomore, William Michelson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free. Hello and welcome back to the Gifford Gymnasium. I am John Vitas here with Anthony Scudillo for tonight's North 1 Group 3 state quarterfinal matchup. Anthony, I'm going to ask you to make a bold prediction here. Who do you have as your winner of tonight's game and maybe give me a score? Well, John, in my opinion, I think Wayne Hills is going to win. Their offensive firepower is just too great for West Milford to cover up. But... The sixth man for West Milford is here. Their fan base is enormous. It has to be half the town, John. That could change the way the game flows. You know what, Anthony? That's definitely the story so far. I mean, the game hasn't started yet, but West Milford's fans are here in force. And you can see them in the top left-hand corner of your screen right now. They're going to be there all night. They're going to be loud. And this might be the first home game for Wayne Hills where the other team's student body is bigger than ours. So it should be interesting to see how the student sections play a part in this game. And we're about get ready to get underway here in the North 1 Group 3 State Quarter Finals. Chris Fonte, your 6 7 center, will tip it off for the Patriots. Your starting lineup Russo, Fonte, Lacarico, Horahan, and Delavoki. And Wayne Hills comes away with the tip. The pass down low to Delavoki, who gets stuffed as West Milford's fans erupt, and they got a fast break going the other way. But it's going to be called a double dribble on West Milford as they try to get into a fast break there. 
The ball will go back to the Wayne, to Wayne Hill, so the first break of the game goes to the Patriots. Well, John, I got the low down from our coach of Wayne Hills, and he said that West Milford is really a transition offense. They get the ball and they start flying up the court like a, a Phoenix Suns offense, and Wayne Hills really has to get back on transition defense. Forehand drive is good. Forehand hits the runner on the bank to give Wayne Hills a 2-0 lead. And as you said, Anthony, Russ Milford pushing the issue on offense, trying to come back quickly. They have the ball in good position underneath. Nice interior passing as there's going to be a three taken here. And it's hit by number 15, Nick Solicio, Solicito, excuse me, as Wes Milford takes a 3-2 lead less than a minute into the game. That was a nice shot, John. He got wide open. A good job of passing it, getting it down low, and then back outside. Nice pass to Lacarico, puts it up, no good. But Steve will go to the line, an 85% free throw shooter on the season. We'll be shooting two. Lacarico leading this Wayne Hill squad, 19 points per game this year. As his first free throw is good. So Lacarico trying to knock off any nerves he might have here in the early going. His first points of the game, hopefully he will have many more to come. As I mentioned, an 85% free throw shooter. 122 made on the year. Hits his second. As Wayne Hills takes the lead right back, it's 4-3 Patriots. John Lacarica has just such a perfect stroke while shooting. I mean, he gets body square and everything. He's just a phenomenal player. There's going to be a blocking foul here on Justin Horahan. As the West Milford guard tried to drive baseline, Horahan couldn't shield him off in time. He couldn't get his feet in position. Ball will go back to the Highlanders inbounding from their own baseline. Forehand trying to guard number one, Mac Miranda. And they're going to call it traveling on number 33, Ron Nyland. Ball will go back to Wayne Hill. So, second turnover of the game for the Highlanders. West Milford in a full court press here as Hills will try to break it. Horahan with the ball. One on one with number four, Chad Hauser, who's an all county player here in Passaic County. John, on defense there, Wayne Hills did a great job of preventing them from getting it into the low post where they have a phenomenal center. And, you know, just doing a great job of, you know, trapping them and making them four shots in the beginning. Hills posts up Russo, couldn't get it to go as Sponti gets his first block. And Lacarica looks to run the fast break. No kickball called. Two on one the other way for West Milford. And Fonte with another stuff. The second block in a row for Chris Fonte as he denies West Milford of regaining the lead. John, two quick blocks for Fonte. Obviously, as we said before, 80 on the year. He's just a fantastic shot blocker. When you're six foot seven, it makes it that much more of an advantage. But it looks like it's going to be a foul call. There was a foul called on. Chris Fonte, his first of the night, as the free throw is no good. Shot taken by Chad Hauser. But Fonte's averaging 3.3 blocks a game, so it's no surprise, but those two were big stuffs, and that got the Wayne Hill student section up on their feet as these two student bodies are going head to head. Second free throw is good, tied up at four. Horahan will run the point. John, what Wayne Hills needs to do is stay in their tempo. Don't get out of it. Stay what we're, you're used to doing. Keep shooting. Get it into the low post. Do what your game plan says to do. Don't stray away from it. With the West Milford student section chanting defense, Russo fadeaway jumpers. No good. Tightly contested shot there as West Milford comes back the other way. And the basket is good from Chad Hauser. West Milford running the floor like they're known to do as Russo tries to give them a little bit of their own medicine, gives it to Lacarica, who will head back to the line to shoot two. Nice dish there from Russo underneath. Lacarica will head to the line. John, it looks like both teams are coming out of the box, sprinting up and down the court. This could be an exhaustion game. Just got to see who lasts longer. You know what, in high school basketball, only eight minute quarters. These kids are well conditioned. They've played a lot of minutes this year, but I expect them to be able to hold up late in the game. Their adrenaline will get them through, if anything. As Lacarica misses his first free throw, a rare miss for him. His second one's good. So Steve three for four from the line. Wayne Hill's now down by just one. This is number 42 getting inside from West Milford. 
But denied by Wayne Hills. Lacarica looks to push, does not have numbers, and it's stolen from behind by West Milford. They have a fast break coming back the other way. Nice pass inside. Oh, circus shot there. By number 33, Ron Nyland. John, he just threw that up off the backboard. Nice job there. Got the spin on, spin on the ball, and it, it went right in. That was, that was a fantastic shot. He was hoping for a foul, but nothing came. and threw the ball up, and it went in. Highlight real play there for West Milford. Russo to Lacarica. No picks for him there as he was looking for one. Lacarica pulls up for three. No good off side iron. Russo chases the long rebound. Gets it to Delavoke. Back to Russo in the corner. Pulls up. No good. Fonte, the offensive board. Puts it back up, no good. They battle for it, West Milford comes away with the board. Lead pass up ahead for Hauser. Hauser inside. Offensive foul called on West Milford. Fans not happy about that. That was Jason Suffman, the senior going inside. Second team foul of the first quarter for West Milford. John, they're going straight at Fonte, left and right, running right down the court and going up straight at him. Well, so far he's gotten the better of the matchup. Two stuffs, and he drew the charge there. As Horahan pulls up now, elbow jumper, no good. Rebounded by Suffman. And here comes West Milford, Wayne Hills in a man-to-man -man defense. As the ball is gonna be knocked away, regained possession for West Milford. As Della Volpe traps him in the corner, and they're gonna call a backcourt, I believe. On West Milford, the ball will go back to the Patriots. John, the one thing that's wrong with West Milford defense is that it's it's so fast, it's somewhat hectic. You know, you got so much going on at the same time, it's hard to really concentrate on what your game plan is when you're just running up and down the court. Well, in my opinion, Anthony, what Wayne Hills needs to do as West Milford gets the steal here, looks to run the fast break as they are able to score. That is number four for West Milford, Chad Hauser. But as I was mentioning, to break that hectic defense, I think Wayne Hills have to have quick, crisp passes, move the ball around a lot, and catch West Milford napping on defense. As you see, Horahan has space, drives up the middle, and lays it in. Nice athletic move by Justin Horahan to get his first basket of the night. Wayne Hills pulls back to within three. A three taken here from West Milford, no good. Off the back of the rim, and a traveling again called on West Milford. That's their third dribbling violation of the night. Ball will go back to the Patriots, down by three. Just too many steps, Vitas. I mean, you can't just jump straight into the hole and think you're not gonna get called. You're gonna get the call. I mean, Wayne Hills has to do a good job of preventing them from getting the hole, but let them go in so they can travel. Sophomore guard Ryan Rainix has come in for us most right now. As the ball's been stolen by Rainix right there, they battle for it in the corner. It's going to be a foul, I believe, on Delavolpe. Yes, it is on Delavolpe. Ball will go back to the Highlanders. Justin Horahan implementing a full court press here. John West Milford is doing a great job on the defensive side. They're preventing Wayne Hills from using the normal offense where they spread it around, hit it around the corners, and then go like, either take a jump shot or throw it down low. They're not letting them do that, and you know, if Hills is not able to do that, another fourth pass there by Lacarica, it's gonna be hard for them to score. Russo tried to draw, draw, draw the charge, excuse me. He wasn't able to do it. West Milford with another fast break, break bucket as they now lead 12-7. Lacarica falls, but he's able to regain his possession. As he appears to be a little bit rattled, he, he took an early three, didn't hit it, but I think that's good for his confidence to get his first shot in the books and really break whatever nervousness he might have. And now Delavoki looks to make a move and does, puts up a shot and one. Travis Delavoki getting inside, putting up a certain shot, draws the foul and puts it in. John, a great job there, breaking down the defense, getting him on the perimeters and then streaking right through the middle. Delavolpe will go to the line as another sub checks in for the Highlanders. Delavolpe shooting 69% from the line for the year. As the West Milford student section is really getting into it now. Free throws short by Delavolpe, goes out of bounds, back to West Milford. Joe Russo knock it out, trying to reach over the West Milford defender. Wayne Hills is going to have to deal with that all night at the free throw line. They're going to have to try to tune out West Milford. There's another steal here by Justin Horahan. 
and then he loses it. They battle for it on the floor. Bo bodies flying everywhere. Jump ball called. It'll go back to the Highlanders. John, a lot of, a lot of questionable calls and no calls. It looks like people are getting fouled left and right on the reaches while they're getting the steals, but a lot of no calls here. Well, Anthony, you used the word hectic tonight, and I think that's a good description. It's been a very fast-paced game, a lot of transition baskets, and there's going to be a lot of questionable calls as West Milford's able to get inside and score. That is Jason Suffman, the senior, as all of West Milford starters are seniors. And another steal by West Milford. Another fast break for them, and it's stuffed by Joe Russo, but the follow is good and the foul. West Milford opening up a seven-point lead on the Patriots. As they followed their shot there, got the offensive board and put it back. Chad Hauser will go to the line now. 16-9 West Milford, 139 to play in the first quarter. Free throw short. Big Chris Fonte swoops in for the board. Lower hand roll, run the point. With the turnovers that Wayne Hills is being forced into, I mean, they really have to get back in transition defense. They're really letting them single-handedly go down the court as the foul there on Joe Russo. You know, they have to get back or else this could be a high-scoring affair for West Milford. I mean, transition defense could come down to the win. Well, you know what? Wayne Hills has gotten to the line a lot in this game, which they drew another foul there, which is great for them. But they haven't gone to their bread and butter, which is three-point shooting. Lacarica took one, missed it, but for him and Russo to get into a rhythm, they're gonna have to take consecutive threes and take a lot of shots because they can hit them, but to this point, they haven't been able to get open shots as Fonte gets inside but can't finish, and they're gonna call a reaching foul on Joe Russo to the delight of the West Milford fans. Ball goes back to the Highlanders, up by seven already as we wind down here in the first quarter, 114 to play. As Mike Quinn now will check into the game, his first action of the night, Joe Russo checks out. John's two juniors in right now for Wayne Hills. A little bit of inexperience. Hopefully they can, you know, cover that up with good, a, a good skill, skill set. And it, it was kicked out on West Milford there, and it'll be Wayne Hills' ball. Quinn will inbound it. Well, Anthony, you said there's actually a third junior in, which is Joe Brandle, who's, who's coming to the game as well as a sub. As Russo will come in, and Quinn will come right back out. So a quick breather for Joe Russo as. West Milford is going into a full court press here. Travis Della Volpe left one on one to try to break it. And it appears he will. He gets across midcourt. <laughs> trying to draw a block, can't do it. Post up Russo who loses the ball. Fast break again for West Milford. Four on one. Joe Brandle trying to stop it. Layup is missed. Putback is missed again. Wide open layup. Missed for West Milford. Wayne Hills catches a break. Lacarica comes back the other way. Puts up a shot, no good. Fonte the board. He gets stripped, and Lacarica's there. Johnny on the spot to pick up the ball. Down low, kicks it back out to Russo. Russo drives, puts it up, no good. Couldn't get the bank to fall. Rainick will push it for West Milford. John, the height advantage is not working for Wayne Hills tonight. I mean, Chris Fonte, a good three inches taller than everyone else on the floor, and you know, one guy is not going to be able to rebound for your team. You have to have more than one guy in there boxing out, and they're not doing that right now. They only have Chris Fonte down there, and he can't single-handedly win this game for them. And they're going to call a charge here on West Milford. It will go on number 42, Jason Suffman. Fonte drew, drew it again. West Milford's not happy with the officiating in this game. As I thought maybe a jump ball would be called, as it appeared both big men had their hand on the ball, but... Wayne Hills catches another break here. They're going to have to start taking advantage of these, uh, these breaks they're getting as Russo will push it now. His shot at the buzzer is no good. So that'll do it for the first quarter of play. A surprising score with West Milford leading the Wayne Hills Patriots 16 to 9. We will be back with the second quarter of action after this. Boy, Dan Cohen here. Where am I? I'm in a sea. A sea that's surrounded by the following countries. Russia, the Ukraine, Bulgaria, Romania, and Turkey. Am I in A, the Mediterranean Sea, 
B, the Black Sea, C, the Baltic Sea, or D, the Red Sea? You said B, the Black Sea. You're right. Welcome back to Wayne Hills High School. With Wayne Hills trailing by seven points as we start the second quarter of play. As you see the Gifford Goonies there, Wayne Hills is cheering squad. They've come in full force tonight, but they've been matched by West Milford, who's coming here and matching black t-shirts. They look good up there in the other le the left-hand corner of your screen. Once we get underway, you will see what I'm talking about. Both sides have been very loud this evening, and we can only expect that con to continue as the game goes on. As Della Volpe gets a give and go here, lays it up, no good. Wayne Hills missing layups left and right. Nice looking developing play for Wayne Hills, but Bellavoki just couldn't finish. As Wes Milford has the ball now in their corner. John, it's hard to win the uh, cheering competition when uh, the, other, the opposing team brings half the town. I mean, you're not gonna win. So it means you just have to win on the court. Yeah, these players are just trying to tune out these kids because they're high school players. They might get rattled in these situations. They don't, they don't see this type of atmosphere too often. As Delavoki draws the foul, he'll go to the line. But it's, it's a challenge for these players to tune out the West Milford crowd, especially uh, I'm talking about the Wayne Hills players now. But they're going to have to do it because we've seen them miss two free throws at the line so far. But they're only going to get louder as this game goes on, and if they can keep it close, it should be a, an electric atmosphere at the Gifford Gym as Delavoki's free throw is no good. Wasn't even close on that one. So he's now one for three from the line tonight. His second is up and no good. Delavopi struggling from the line. He's a 69% free throw shooter during the regular season. But the playoff pressure seems to be getting to him so far in the first half. Russo will inbound from the baseline. As They're playing like boards right now, John. They gotta calm down and play their game. It's a three-point shot there blocked. Russo gets his own rebound, goes up for it twice, misses again. Russo getting two offensive boards. Nice save there, but it goes into Lacarica's hand. As Lacarica gets level, hits his head on the floor, he goes down hard. And they're going to stop the game here as Steve Lacarica, the leading scorer for Wayne Hills, is on the ground in pain. It appears he hit his head on the floor as he got decked from behind by a West Milford player going up for the rebound. As we may see Wayne Hills' fine athletic trainer, Margaret Doherty, coming onto the court. And Wayne Hills will not be going to their bench. They're worried about their leading scorer and three-point threat, Steve Lacarica, who's still on the ground. He's slow to get up. And as there appears to be a break in the action, we'll keep an eye on Steve Lacarica. But we'll take a look at the girls' North 1 Group 3 state playoffs as we have the bracket for you. Your Wayne Hills Lady Patriots won their first round matchup. As you see the girls bracket here, this is the left side of the bracket. Wayne Hills is on the right side as Paramus and Teaneck, Ultapan and Pascag Valley meet in quarterfinal matchups. Wayne Hills won their first game against Sparta. They're on the other side of the bracket as you see now. They took on Lakeland tonight. We're not sure about the outcome of that game as I believe it's going on now. And Steve Lacarica sits up for the first time to a round of applause here at the Gifford Gym but is very shaken up as he went to the ground hard. You just hope it doesn't affect his head too bad because a concussion would most likely knock him out of this game and deal a major blow to Wayne Hills. John, if you're watching, if you were watching, excuse me, he went up for a layup and got it blocked and then it just shoved to the ground while being in the process of being blocked and it hit his head hard. I mean, uh, it, it's hard to get up after a hit like that. Now Steve is up and walking off pretty much under his own power. Margaret assisting him a little bit, but he appears to be rattled. Now concussions are something more teams are starting to take seriously, and I'm sure if he has one, Coach Catalano will not let him back in the game, but it appears Lacarica will be headed out of here, or to the end of the bench, my bad. So we'll see, we'll keep an eye on him as 
sophomore Matt Heskins has checked into the game replacing Lacarica. Heskins has played a major role on this team down the stretch. Coach Catalano has given him meaningful minutes in big games. Heskins has come through shooting well over 50% from three-point range as Heskins gets the rebound there. Russo runs the fast break, gives it to Brando who lays it up and in. Joe Brando off the assist from Joe Russo. Puts in the basket for Wayne Hills as they cut it to five. Rainix finds 42 Suffman who gets underneath. Russo falls to the ground. West Milford look, make, looking to make something happen. They drive baseline, reverse layup, no good. Russo battles for the board, comes away with it as he runs a break now. He's taking it himself, lays it up and in. Joe Russo, uninstalled here by Travis Delavopi. Wayne Hill starting to show some fight as Heskins who gets it, gets it back to Russo, guarded tightly by Reynix. And it's taken back by West Milford here. Reynix looks to run the point, guarded by Heskins. Kick it out into the corner. As now they'll drive baseline, puts up the baby hook in the lane. Sky hook from number 42, Jason Suffman, who scored a few baskets tonight. 18-13 West Milford. John, this was just in. The girls did win tonight, so they will move on to the next round of the tournament. Wow, upset city in the girls' tournament as Fonte gets inside and foul will be called on the floor. So Wayne Hills will inbound, but uh, Lakeland, the team they played, was the number two seed in the tournament. And Wayne Hills being the seventh seed, that's a big upset. I know the girls were, knew they were going to be have a tough matchup tonight, but uh, pleasant surprises. They will now head into the state semifinals. So a nice run from the Lady Patriots basketball team led by Coach Porta. As you see the bracket once again, they'll play the winner of High Point and Ramco on March 7th in the semifinals. As Fonte's free throw is good, hits the first one. Chris Fonte has been a little shaky from the line this year, 53%. So not what you'd hope for him, but for a big man, that's pretty much what you would expect. His second free throw is good, so Fonte's stroke looks solid here in the first half. Wayne Hills cuts the lead to three, their first big run of the game. John, they really need a focus on their defense here. A stop here and a three-point down the road could tie this game up, and that's huge. Wayne Hills playing tight defense as Mike Quinn has come back in. Quinn tries to strip it, stolen by Heskins, who gets it up ahead to Brando. Brando on the fast break, lays it up and in. Joe Brando with his second basket of the night. West Milford forced to call a timeout. Wayne Hills cuts it to one, 18-17. Look at the inexperience here, covered up by skill set. Matt Heskins, the super sophomore, comes off the bench and doing a great job giving it to the junior, Joe Brando. And you know what, Anthony, with Lacarica injured, they're going to have to rely on these kids, these younger guys coming off the bench. Mike Quinn started that by getting the strip in the corner. Heskins picked it up, just a sophomore, get, got it ahead to another underclassman with Brandle, who laid it in. So Wayne Hills is going to hope to see a lot more of that as they go into the stretch run of this game, especially if Lacarica is not able to come back. So both teams break the huddle now. Words of wisdom from the West Milford coach as he's trying to get his team's energy level back up to where it was in the first quarter, as they will bring up the ball. This is number one, Mac Mirando for the Highlanders. Picks it on Quinn there, but he's able to fight around it. Driving baseline on Fonte, who gets another stuff, but they're going to call a foul on Chris Fonte. So Fonte with his height advantage, able to get his paw on the ball, but they're going to say he bumped him with the body. So West Milford will go to the line with number 42, Jason Suffman, who has probably around eight points this evening. That's Fonte's second foul, John. We'll have to keep an eye on that as Suffman's first free throw drops. As West Milford fans do the Duke cheer on the free throws. Our, our fans, Wayne Hills' fans, trying to get him to miss. Second free throw, no good. Short, Russo comes in for the board. Lead pass intercepted by West Milford. Pass was intended for Heskins, but Russo will try to make up for it. West Milford in the corner. As number 33, Nyland drives, kicks it out to number 11 who pulls up for three. Air ball, offensive board, nope. They're gonna say he stepped on the baseline. Ball goes back to the Patriots as Nick Solicito will come back in for West Milford. So Anthony with Lacarica out, 
with what appears to be a, a more serious injury. Who for Wayne Hills needs to step up in your mind? Well, obviously Joe Russo needs to start shooting better than he has, and they can't keep forcing passes over the top. A foolish pass from Joe Brandle leads to a fast break basket for West Milford. He threw up a weak sitting duck as Lacarica will check back into the game. He appears to be all right as Delavolpe breaks the press. Comes in, kicks it out into the corner, knocked away by West Milford. But here comes your leading scorer, Steve Lacarica, back into the game, replacing Joe Brandle. And it looks like the sophomore, excuse me, sophomore Matt Heskins will stay in the game. A great point guard, really gets the ball around, spreads it out, and also a great shooter when he gets the chance. Yeah, Heskins, I believe, is shooting six for eight on the season from three. So he can hit the shot. He runs a strong point, as you see him ball handling here. Delavope posts up Russo. Russo tries to drive in, puts up an off-balance shot, and they're going to call a foul on West Milford. Their fans are livid. They have been the whole night. Russo will head to the line. They're going to say he knocked him on the arm. John, I think Hills is almost nearing the bonus, so a few more fouls and they'll be getting free throws the entire night. They actually are in the bonus already. West Milford has nine fouls, but that was a shooting foul, so Russo will get two shots. First free throw is good for him. He's also a 69% free throw shooter on the year. Pulls Hills to within three, midway through the second quarter. His second is up, no good off the back rim. Quinn battles for the board, but West Milford comes away with it as Mirandel will run the point. They kick it into the corner as number 42 drives down the lane and they're gonna call a jump ball, I believe. Yes, they will, a possession arrow in favor of West Milford, so they will get the ball back. John, it looked like he was about to go up for the dunk and Mike Quinn got up there before he did and blocked it. Good heads up play for Mike Quinn to get up and get his hand on the ball. Wayne Hill still in there, man-to-man -man defense. They haven't changed from that the whole night. Number 33 makes a nice move, puts it in, and the foul. They're going to call an arm check on Joe Russo. Or maybe Matt Heskins, we're not quite sure. It, it will go on Heskins, his first of the night, but a nice move by Ron Nylon as he broke the ankles of Heskins. Free throw is good as Rainix will come in for Mirando. West Milford has pushed the lead back up to six. It's 24-18. John and Wayne Hills, it's only two threes away. They're always close. Yeah, they really have to get their outside presence known. I mean, they're not shooting the ball enough. There's no doubt about that. They have to establish a three-point game and perimeter shooting. Because they've done a pretty good job getting to the line. They'll get two more free throws here as West Milford is in the double bonus now. Delavopi will go back to the line. He's one for four for the night. 69% shooter on the year. First one rattles in for Travis. He now has four points on the night. Second shot is good. Delavopi. Up and out of three for six for the game as West Milford looks to run. Mirando gives the ball up to Nyland. Trying to slow down the West Milford deep offense here. I mean, they're so high paced that it's really hard to slow them down, but Hills has a lot of good athletes in right now and they're doing a great job. And I think that's what Wayne Hills should look to do, is slow it down as the threes rattles out for West Milford. Russo with the board. He's been all over the boards tonight. Lacarico runs the point for the Patriots. Pulls up an NBA range three. Rattles out for Steve Lacarico. Shot looked good. Just off the mark. West Milford comes back the other way. P Mike Quinn tries to get posted up and they're going to call offensive foul on West Milford. Another break for the Patriots. As these fans are just so upset for West Milford. They're going to call, I believe, an arm bar on West Milford as the player tried to clear a path with his forearm. That's the 11th foul now, the third on number 42, Jason Suffman, as I believe that they have two players in foul trouble that are normally starters. So now Heskins will take it up for the Patriots. 2.49 to go in the first half. Hills down by four as West Milford won an offensive foul on Heskins, but they didn't get it. 
Bellavoki now with the ball, makes a move, puts it up, no good, and they're gonna call a foul on West Milford. Travis Bellavoki will go to the line for the fourth time this evening and try to add to his point total. The West Milford coach arguing about foul calls. I mean, it's really going both ways. Though. There's fouls on each side. I mean, you really can't argue. I mean, referees can't do everything, but, you know, you just have to play the game. Delavope misses his first free throw. He's been at the line plenty often tonight. Second is way short. Tries to get his own board and gets the steal. Dishes it to Quinn. He puts it in. Mike Quinn with his first basket of the night. Pulls Hills to within two and they're right back in this game. Nice job of pressure defense there, John. And number four, Chad Hauser hits the jumper for the Highlanders and stretch the lead back out to four. Teams exchanging baskets now as the pace begins to st step up here towards the latter half of the first half of play. Delavope tries to penetrate, the ball's knocked away. It'll go back to Wayne Hills. Wes Milford's coach is just livid. Russo will inbound. Lacarica gets it to Russo, back to Heskins, who drives up the middle, kicks it out to Russo, pulls up for three. No good, short. Delavope gets in there for the board. And they're gonna call an over the back on Della Volpe. Maybe a makeup call by the ref as West Milford finally gets their first questionable call of the night to go in their favor. So they'll get the ball back here as now Coach Catalano is getting on the refs. That's the second foul on Della Volpe, so he'll have to watch himself for the next few minutes. 149 to play in the first half. And Wayne Hills is in the bonus. That's their eighth foul of the half. So it'll be a one in one situation for the Highlanders. This is number 15, Nick Solacito at the line. First shot's good. Always important to hit the front end of the one and one as Della Volpe will come out. As Coach Catalano doesn't want him to pick up his third foul. So he will likely be out for the rest of the half. As Joe Brandel checks back in, the junior guard. from Solicito is good. West Milford back up by six now with 148 to play. Joe Brando will handle the ball. Lacarica and Russo having trouble getting open. Good defense by West Milford all evening as they haven't been able to get off too many threes tonight. Heskins looking to break free now. He's trying to maneuver, gets it to Lacarica who's guarded tightly. John, both Lacarica and Russo only have three points each tonight. Lacarica pulls up the jumper, rattles out again for Steve Lacarica. Ball goes out of bounds to West Milford. Joe Russo trying to save the ball. Goes out of bounds back to the Highlanders. But as you said, Anthony, Lacarica and Russo have been shut down tonight. I don't think you can blame it on them choking under the pressure because they've been playing so hard. But West Milford's defense has just been great. Their man-to-man -man matchups have been in their favor this evening, especially on Wayne Hills' offensive end. As number 33, Nylon gets inside, and they're gonna call an offensive foul on West Milford. Ball back to the Patriots. I think it was away from the ball. I don't see how they could have called it on the ball, on the player who was driving. So it might be a moving pick. I really don't know what the call was, but it's on number 33, Ron Nylon, who was driving, so they're gonna call a charging foul on him. I'm not sure about that call, but it's his third of the night, so he'll have to take a seat. As Brando has face down low, kicks it to Quinn, 16-footer short, rebounded by West Milford. They look to run the break now. No numbers for them, but they find an open man in the corner. As they'll slow things down with 43 seconds to go in the half. Wayne, Wayne Hill's in a tight man-to-man -man defense as Wayne West Milford's able to execute a pick perfectly and get an easy layup. They extend the lead back to eight. Heskin's able to come away with the ball, gets it back to Quinn. Back to Heskin, looking to make something happen 17 seconds to go. 
Russo back to Lacarica, back to Russo. Inside, no good by Mike Quinn. Wes Milford has numbers coming back the other way, and he's stuffed by Joe Brandle. Joe Brandle coming back the other way from half court. Shot is way over the backboard. So that'll do it for the first half of play in your North One Group Three State Quarterfinals. The West Milford Highlanders lead the Wayne Hills Patriots 30 to 22. Anthony, what does, Wayne, what does Wayne Hills need to do in the second half to come back? John, they need to get back to their offense. Start setting picks, start shooting the three. With Chris Fonte out, they really can't go to the low post because the height advantage is not there. And West Milford's D has done a fantastic job on defense tonight, forcing shots and forcing passes. Wayne Hills has to start shooting the ball, getting it around, spreading it out, making some points. I completely agree with everything you said, Anthony. Wayne Hills needs to run a motion offense. They've been playing hard all night. They've been moving around, but they're going to need to do more of that. Set screens and get open threes because you can get back into a game quick if you hit some threes, and that's what Wayne Hills does best. They need to get Lacarica and Russo's threes because the two of them combined has only taken three, and they haven't hit one. And for Wayne Hills not to hit all, one three in the entire first half, it's unacceptable if you're Coach Catalano. They've done a good job getting to the free throw line. I think they've had a lot of help from the refs in this game. But they're going to need that again in the second half, and they need to hit threes. So that does it for the first half of action. We'll be back with more from the Gifford Gym after this. Welcome back to Wayne Hills High School at the North One Group Three State Quarterfinal matchup where your Wayne Hills boys basketball team trail the West Milford Highlanders 22 to 30 as we get ready to start the second half. Anthony, the last time Wayne Hills won a state championship was in 1995. Back then, Wayne Hills was a North One Group Four school. They're now Group Three. In that game, they defeated Hackensack and their coach was Jay Cody. Now, Anthony, you've seen this team play several games this year. Do you think the 2008-2009 team is a championship caliber team and can they get Wayne Hills their first state championship in uh, 14 years? Honestly, they have the talent to do this. They have the talent to go as far as they want. It's the willpower and performing to the amount of skills that this team has. They're a fantastic shooting team, an extremely well-conditioned team they just have to perform to the way they know they can. It's a mental thing right now. And until that's gone, they're not going to win. You know what, Anthony? I agree. I do think they have the talent to do it. They have great shooting. If they're hitting their shots, Russo and Lacarica, if they're hitting their threes, this team could be just about anybody. I mean, you talk about the Patterson schools. A lot of people try to match up Wayne Hills with those schools as being the top echelon of high school basketball in New Jersey. But I think this team could do it, but right now they got a battle on their hands with West Milford. They got to worry about the quarterfinals before they can think ahead at all. And just in case you were wondering, Wayne Hills would play the winner of Sparta and Mount Olive in the, sec in the semifinal if they're able to get past this one. But they got their hands full with this Highlander team who leads by eight. As we go into the second half, the teams take the floor. It is your starting five for the Patriots, junior Chris Fonte, Seniors, Joe Russo, Steve Lacarica, Justin Horahan, and Travis Delavopi, who are trying to avoid having this be their final high school basketball game. We are underway now in the second half of action. Steve Lacarica with the ball 
as West Milford opens up back in their man-to-man -man defense, which worked great for them in the first half. Lacarica pulls up a long three, short. Fonte tries to come away with the board, goes out of bounds, back to the Patriots. Off the fingertips of Nyland. Russo to inbound under his own basket. Lobs it up to Fonte. If you don't know what to do, that's, that's what you would do. Fonte stands at 6'7". He's got a good 3-4 inch height advantage as Russo pulls up from three, no good. Fonte the board, interior move, lays it up and in. Chris Fonte with, I believe, his second, first basket of the night. Second time he put points up on the board as he hit two free throws earlier as West Milford misses the shot rebound by Russo. Wayne Hills will try to take the momentum in the second half. Lacarica for three and they're gonna call a travel. Shot was no good anyway. But they're gonna say Lacarica shuffled his feet, which it looked like he did. Ball goes back to the Highlanders. Wayne Hill is down by six now. Less than 45 seconds into the second half. John, going back to that point of throwing it up to Chris Fonte, when you're that much taller, it's, it's like throwing up to a, a big tree, and you know he's just able to there to go and get it. As so Horhan with a nice steal there, tries to get it to Del Volpe, a forced pass, but hit out by Justin Horhan showing his big ups that he has. We see it time and time again. Everyone loves to see it. There's rumors the kid can dunk, and I wouldn't doubt it. As he snatched that loose ball and get, got Wayne Hills a possession. They lob it up to Fonte again. Who puts it in? Chris Fonte, his second basket of the game. Of his, and they have him established now in the second half. And I think that's a huge thing for Wayne Hills. Because if they can get points from him, that's great. But that can also open up the perimeter shooting game, which Wayne Hills absolutely needs. Oh. Nice move down low by number 42, Jason Suffman. West Milford back up by six after Wayne Hills had cut it to four. Della Volpe tries to push. Lob it up to Fonte again who puts it up. And in Chris Fonte, another basket. Wayne Hills cuts it back down to four. Fonte, six points in less than a minute and a half. And Wayne Hills is right back in the game and a double dribble called on West Milford. Wayne Hills taking the momentum in the third quarter. 32-28 West Milford. But Wayne Hills is starting five, is making things happen out there with their three guard lineup. As Horahan assumes the duties of bringing the ball up the court. John, it seems like the uh, speech of Coach Catalano at halftime really motivated his troops to get in there, start shooting the ball, get into the low post where you have the advantage. And they're looking for Fonte now every time they touch the ball and Russo hits a three. His first three of the game and Joe Russo lets out a monstrous roar as Wayne Hills pulls to within one. West Milford takes a timeout. Less than two minutes into the second half, Wayne Hills has cut the lead right back down to one. Judd coming out of the box hard. Quick points. Russo already matched his scoring from the first half. This is incredible. If they keep this up, it's going to be hard to stop them. As we said earlier, they are a streaky team. Once they get hard, hot, excuse me, hot, it is hard to stop them. There's no doubt Coach Catalano's speech at halftime got into the heads of his Wayne Hills team because the seniors have come out firing on all cylinders, especially the junior, Chris Fonte, who's made three baskets already in under a minute and a half, like I said before. But West Milford's huddle is very tense right now as their coach is trying to get into the minds of his players and inspire them to play like they did in the first quarter of play where they were able to open up a six-point lead. Both teams break the huddle to the sound of the horn as Wayne Hills' student body for the first time tonight is much louder than West Milford's. They're going at it right now, John. The Goonies and the West Milford fans are going at it head to head. This, is, this isn't even a basketball game anymore. This is a battle for pride and it's going back and forth. West Milford starts their possession trying to battle through a full court press by Wayne Hills. Loses the ball, Lacarica misses the steal is West Milford, good ball movement around the perimeter. As they kick it out now with three, way long rebound back to West Milford, who's able to kick it out to number 33, who drives in the lane, makes a nice move, no good. Offensive board, and another stuff by Wayne Hills, but they're gonna call a foul on, I believe, Russo. West Milford, good job crashing the boards there, got it, getting themselves a couple extra possessions and they'll get a chance to try to extend their lead back to the to where it was. John, the foul is on Travis Delavope. That's his third, you gotta watch the foul trouble for him. He's a crucial part of this offense in front of the ball around. And I'm sure Delavope is very disappointed as the first free throw is no good. 
because he's a senior. He doesn't want this to be his last game. He's come out playing very hard in the second half. Not that he didn't in the first half, but Coach Catalano is going to leave him in the game here. A risky call, leaving his point guard in the game with three fouls here in the early going of the second half. So we'll see how Dele how intense Delavope is going to be on defense. And I think he just answered the question as he pulled over a West Milford player with no fear as Wayne Hills gets inside and puts in another basket to tie the game. First time tonight that Wayne Hills has tied this game 33 all. Three minutes into the second half. This game is tied up, Anthony. As not anymore because West Milford just put the ball in the hoop. That was Christian Thompson who's gotten some minutes here as West Milford's been in foul trouble in this game. Justin Horahan falls, loses the ball. Fast break for Nyland, who's trying to drive on Horahan, puts it in. West Milford grabs the momentum right back. Full court pass to Della Volpe, who gets stuck from behind. Coast to coast for both teams. West Milford running the break. And they pull up from 15 feet and hit. West Milford pulls to back up by six. 39-33 Highlanders. West, Mil West Milford is pumped up. Their crowd is on their feet, and Wayne Hills looks demoralized, Anthony. John, Ron, Nyland coming out big for West Milford. Three huge shots in a row, doing a great job. They got to keep it up. But Wayne Hills has to slow it down again, get their shots up, make them, and it's back to a three. Excuse me, it's a six point game now. They got to start shooting the ball again, and they'll tie it up. It'll be fine. Now, you mentioned Nyland, who's just scored two baskets in a row. The kid was in foul trouble in the first half, didn't get hit the minutes he would like, but he's getting his minutes now in the second half and he's making up for the time he missed. As Wayne Hills takes the court, their team just looks, like I said, demoralized it. They they're had their heads down. Coach Catalano broke the huddle early. I don't know if that's the right move to make, but they're, gonna, they're, they're being tested right now because they got back in the game, tied it up, but now they're back down by six and they're gonna have to come right back and with, with fight. And the swagger that Wayne Hills basketball has had this season, coming in with huge expectations as Della Volpe runs the point. Makes a nice move, kicks it out to Lacarica. Pump fakes, comes into the middle, 18 footer, no good, gets his own board, puts it up and in. Steve Lacarica, three point play, following his own shot after missing the jumper. You could see he wanted that basket. John, he knows this could possibly be his last high school game. He will probably go on to play collegiate basketball, not at a D1 school, but at a, a school, if you get into college basketball, that's fantastic, anywhere you're, it is. He does not want it to end here for him. He wants to be a state champion, just like every other person wants it for him. Lacarica makes the free throw, cuts the lead in half, back to three. And that was just a great hustle play by Steve Lacarica. You can see he wants this, the pressure's not getting to him. Wayne Hills gets the ball right back. Another traveling on West Milford. That's got to be at least the fifth or sixth time they've done that tonight. So Wayne Hills gets the ball with a chance to tie it up on this possession. Midway through the third, third quarter. Horahan working on Nyland. Horahan gets inside, puts it up. Bank is no good. Fonte the offensive board. He puts it up and he's blocked. They battle for the ball. And they're going to call a foul on Steve Lacarica. Trying to make a backcourt steal. Nope, it's going to go... Yes, the on C Black Rico. Excuse me. That's just his. I'm waiting for them to post a foul for him. He should not be in any foul trouble. That's, That's only just his, his first, first foul, John. First foul for La Rico. Hills down by three, both student sections on their feet and cheering. As a wide open three from Mil West Milford, no good. And it's ripped right back away for, by the man who missed that shot as he's gonna be trapped in the corner. Makes a move, keeps his dribble, gets inside. He's fouled, he'll go to the line. Shot was no good. Nice fight there by Mac Mirando, the senior guard who'll head to the line. That's gonna be the third foul on Wayne Hills' is Justin Horahan. So if coach left Delavopi in the game, I'd expect him to leave Horahan in the game as well and trust that his seniors won't commit any stupid fouls. First free throw from Miranda is no good. As Rainix will come back into the game for Nyland. 
John, if you're Coach Catalina, who do you go to on your bench if both Jorge and De La Volpe get their fourth fouls? You know what, Matt Heskin's proven he can handle the pressure as well as Joe Brandle. As the ball's stolen here, they battle for it. Kids sliding all over the place. Miranda able to pick up his dribble. Get it inside to number four who lays it up and in for West Milford. That's Chad Hauser who gets the bucket. Mil West Milford back up by five as Lacarica looks to run. Trapped in the corner. Gets it across to Della Volpe, back to Russo for three. It's good, and the foul! Joe Russo, a four-point play opportunity as he's knocked to the ground. The Goonies are going wild. Joe Russo cuts the lead to three, and he'll head to the line. John, back and forth battle. This is, this is insane. Goonies are going crazy. Milford's going crazy. This is what it's all about. You know what, Anthony, last year at Wayne Valley's game was great, but I think this one might be just as good. And Russo's free throw is no good. So he's not able to complete the four-point play, but three was pretty good in its own right. Wayne Hill's down by three now. 42-39, West Milford, as Wayne Hills has tightened up the D. Miranda was able to get inside, and it's laid in by Thompson. Russo, I'm sorry, Fonte couldn't get there in time for the block. So West Milford back up by five. Lacarica having trouble inbounding it, is able to get it to Horahan in the corner. And Horahan will bring it up for the Patriots. Horahan picks up his dribble, gets it to Lacarica, who gets inside and lays it in. Nice drive by Steve. Lacarica cuts the lead back to three. John, five points this quarter alone for Steve Lacarica, beating his first half total. He's got eight for the game. You'd expect him to get a lot more than that in this game. As Wes Milford looks to move the ball around, back inside to Thompson. It's kicked out, knocked away by Della Volpe, and Wes Milford gets it right back. Cross court pass to Miranda, who goes right back across. This is number four, he's gonna lay it up, and good. That is Chad Hauser with another basket for West Milford. They're right back up by five. These teams going toe to toe. That's right, John. I mean, both these, this is, this is, this is gonna be a full round battle. This, this is beyond my expectations of the game. I said earlier it was gonna be a high powered offense game. And it's a lot of excitement, but this is way more than what I expected. I, I agree, Anthony. The intensity has been raised for the playoffs. There's no question about that. They opened both sides of the bleachers for this game. Both sides are filled to capacity for this playoff matchup between your between the fourth seeded Wayne Hills Patriots and fifth seeded West Milford Highlanders as Della Volpe takes it up for Wayne Hills. Down by five, 115 to go in the third quarter. Double teamed by Della Volpe. That means somebody's open. And it's gonna go off Lacarica back to the Highlanders. Nice job by Wes Milford to get a hand in there, and it went off Lacarica. As number 42 checks in, steps Jason Suffman. As number 44, Christian Thompson goes out to a nice round of applause. Christian Thompson, the only junior that's seen action tonight. The crowd impressed with his play so far. Lacarica trying to get a steal here. And they're gonna call a five second violation on West Milford, ball back to the Patriots. Good tight D there from Wakarika. Fans wanted to reach in, but they didn't get it. So Wayne Hills will get the ball. Another turnover by West Milford as they get some subs into the game. Thompson comes right back in. Looks like they're worried about the foul trouble of Softman. I mean, he has three fouls thus far. 55 seconds left in the third quarter. They don't want to risk anything. He's probably their best player. They don't want to get, get him into foul in trouble. Lacarica gets inside, hits the 12-foot jumper to cut the lead right back to three. Lacarica in double digits now as West Milford's able to get inside on Hills. And a traveling call on the Highlanders. Another turnover by West Milford. Down by three, Wayne Hills will try to make, make things happen now before the end of the third quarter. That's the second foul on Rainix. West Milford's fans really upset with these calls. As Lacarica crosses up Miranda and he's fouled from behind. It's gonna be on either Miranda or Rainix. But the bottom line is that Steve Lacarica will get two free throws. An 85% free throw shooter. 
He has 10 points this evening as junior Matt Block will be getting his first action of the, of the night. Lacarica out the line. First free throw is no good. Lacarica very disappointed with himself as Fonte will come out as well as Della Volpe. They don't want them to pick up any cheap fouls, so they're going to get some fresh legs in there. Guys who can afford to foul with the block and Quinn coming in, coming in a pair of junior forwards. As Lacarica's second free throw is true, cuts the lead now to two. So if Wayne Hills can keep it at a two-point game going into the fourth quarter, they're very much in the game. John met the block, not the offensive player that Travis Delavope is, but he is a defensive presence. Gets a large number of blocks, a large number of steals. He is a guy to be reckoned with on the defensive side. Eight seconds to go as West Milford gets inside. Nyland misses the J. They get it back inside, and it's stuffed by Wayne Hills. And Thompson gets it and puts it in at the buzzer. Christian Thompson with a big layup at the buzzer to make it a four-point game. So at the end of three quarters of play in the North 1 Group 3 quarterfinal state playoff game, your Wayne Hills Patriots will head into the fourth quarter trailing by four points. Will they pull off the comeback? We'll find out next. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to stay right here. I'm John Vitas here with Anthony Scudillo. Now, Anthony, we mentioned earlier that our girls team, the Wayne Hills Lady Patriots, defeated the Lakeland Lancers, a team who Wayne Hills fans are familiar with as you see the bracket here. Wayne Hills beating Lakeland. They'll go into the semifinals to face the winner of either High Point or Ramapo. A game played at Ramapo, Ramapo being the three seed. So assuming they go on, which is not an assumption we can make, but assuming they go on, Wayne Hills will play at Ramapo on March 7th. John, that'll be a rivalry game. Tough matchup. I mean, Wayne Hills, Ramapo, there's not much like it. I mean, you have Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley, and Wayne Hills, Ramapo, and those probably are the two biggest rivalries. Now, Anthony, we called two games for the Lady Patriots this year as the teams break the huddle, and we, we saw them lose to a very good Patterson Catholic team. We also saw them beat Indian Hills. So they got an upset tonight against Lakeland. Can they pull off another upset again against Ramapo? If I had to guess, yes, because they are such a dynamic team, great shooting team, you know, a lot of inexperience, but the seniors on that team are fantastic, and Heather Higgins and Holly Basnick. Yeah, I don't think Higgins and Basnick are going to let their underclassmen play any worse than they have been because they're just going to challenge their younger players to step up. They don't want to lose as their senior year goes on. As we get back to the boys game now, we have a very important game on our hands here ourselves with Wayne Hills down by four. West Milford inbounds from their own baseline. A set play gets, gets the ball to the open man as they swing it wide open for three. Nyland misses air ball. Thompson, the offensive board, misses the layup. The ball goes to the ground. Miranda gets it. Thompson and Lacarica go to the floor, and they find the wide open player underneath. Chad Hauser hits the layup for the Highlanders, who lead once again by six points. John, a dysfunctional play there, but they got it to go in. Lacarica gets inside. He will head to the line. A nice drive by Steve Lacarica, who has really stepped up in this game. And that's going to be the fourth foul on Mac Miranda. So he will head to the bench with seven minutes to go. So the point guard for West Milford, not happy with the calls, but he's going to have to sit on the bench for a couple minutes now. As Lacarica at the line hits the first free throw, cut the, cutting the lead to five. Lacarica, by our count, has had a pretty good night at the line. Not 85%, but you can't expect that in such a pressure-packed game like this. Second shot falls for Steve Lacarica. Back to a four-point deficit for the Patriots. As now Rainix looks to push on Horahan. They post up. Nyland, back to Nyland. Wide open 18-foot jumper. He hits it. And expect a shot you'd expect him to make, and he nails it. Back to a six-point lead for West Milford. Such a high-powered offense for West Milford. They make shots left and right. Nice shot there by Steve Lacarica. Goes up and over number 44. 
Christian Thompson, who's had a pretty good game. Steve like Lacarica, Anthony, excuse me, is taking over this game, at least on the Wayne Hill side. West Milford has been answering. But we talked about Lacarica not stepping up in big games, but he's answered the call tonight. He has certainly stepped up tonight as Horahan sacrifices his body and flies into the crowd to no avail as the ball will go back to West Milford. He stepped on the sideline. 52. 48 West Milford, 6.37 to go in the game. Wayne Hills Hill players hoping it's not 6.37 left in their career as Lacarica is gonna be called for the foul. West Milford's number four, Chad Hauser will go to the line, shooting two. The second foul on Steve Lacarica. Hauser's free throw rattles home. Extends the lead to five with 6.37 to play. Both of these crowds starting to get even more into this game if that's possible. They don't want their team to go home empty handed tonight. Second free throw, no good. Russo, great job boxing out and picks up the board. He's played well tonight as well. Hasn't gotten the amount of three point opportunities that he would have liked but they're gonna swing it now to Lacarica, a long three, falls way short, he gets his own board in the corner, great follow by Steve, who loses the ball, Nyland's taking it back the other way, he's trapped now, he loses the ball, he gets it back to his teammate, we'll slow it down a little bit, Rainex to Nyland in the corner, no good, rebound to Russo, he's doing a great job on the boards tonight, boxing out, they list him at 6'2", I believe, but he's probably about six foot six one. so he's done a great job, as. Televopi misses a three in the corner. They're going to call an over-the-back foul on Justin Horahan. John, they got to make those shots. I mean, Russo and Lacarica are starting to get most of the attention on the offensive side, so that means that other people like Horahan and Delavope are going to be open. They got to make the shots that they're given. Yeah, but those kind of fouls that you just saw, Wayne Hills cannot afford to make. But it's only their fourth of the half. So they have a couple more to give as Nyland lays it up and in for West Milford. Seven point game, Wayne Hills is gonna have to tighten up that defense because if they keep giving up baskets as Lacarica pulls up and hits a long three. That's an NBA range three from Steve Lacarica. His first of the night. Wayne Hills right back in it, four point game. Steve Lacarica is not gonna let this one, he's not gonna let his team go home quietly. As a kickball call here on West Milford, easy call for the officials, no complaints about that one. John, you can truly see right there what the three-point shooting does for this Wayne Hills team. It gives them such a presence and such an enormous amount of momentum. It's truly incredible. Yeah, West Milford had all the momentum. It looked like they were gonna take control of this game, but that three just completely turned it around, and Lacarica takes another long one. That's flirting with 30 feet right there. You no good, just missed. But Steve Lacarica wants the ball in his hands, which is something that some people m might not agree with that, that he wanted to do that in other games. But tonight, he's answered the call and grabbed the bull by the horns, and he's going all out in this second half. There's no question about that. Tight D from Wayne Hills. West Milford trying to catch them over pursuing as Mirando gets it down low. This is Hauser inside, gets it to Nyland who lays it up and in. West Milford extends it back to a six point game. After Wayne Hills tied it in the third quarter, they haven't been able to get it back to a tie game. Russo wide open for three and hits. Joey Russo, his second three pointer of the night. And when you give him that much time, he is not gonna miss that shot. Like you said, Anthony, three pointers paying huge dividends for Wayne Hills. They cut it right back to three. Look, John, if they play, good defense, they can really make this their game. They are starting to shoot. They are starting to play better defense than they had in the first half. If they can keep it up, get a couple steals, their shooting's there now. Like you know, we said, they're a streaky team. You know what, Anthony, their shooting is there, but they have to get open first. They've hit four threes in the second half, which is great because they didn't hit any in the first half, which is shocking, but if they can get open looks, West Milford better watch out because they're gonna hit them 
And I think the reason Coach West Milford called that timeout was because the coach realized that Wayne Hills is starting to get open looks from the perimeter. And with Joe Russo and Lacarica hitting their shots, he's starting to get a little bit worried, in my opinion. Because, like you said, the three-point basket can change the game in a heartbeat. As Wayne Hills is going to look to do that now, down by just three. 4-13 to play in this playoff matchup. Miranda working on Horahan. John, you can also see what the presence of Chris Fonte has done. As we said earlier, if you get into the low post, it'll get people open outside, and they did a great job of that. Fonte picks up the foul. Thompson will head to the free throw stripe. As you saw, bodies flying all over the place. Lacarica went down hard. Horahan looks to be a little bit shaken up. You can just hear the skin going against the floor. It's not a pretty sound, but it shows you how much these guys really want this, this game. Tom, As you just saw, Coach Catalano not in the best of moods right now. His team down by three with three minutes and 57 seconds left. This is their game to win, but they have to start playing the way they know they can. Thompson misses both free throws to the dismay of his teammates. That's something you can't afford to do at this stage of such a big game. As Lacarica trying to get open in the corner. Della Volpe takes it inside to Horahan who looks to take a three but pulls back. Things getting slowed up a bit here. Russo back to Della Volpe. It's stolen by Wes Milford. Nylon has a fast break and he lays it in. That is Ron Nylon for Wes Milford. He's had a good game tonight after experiencing some foul trouble in the first half but Big play there for West Milford, back up by five. They swing it to Russo, a long three, partially blocked, but he'll head to the line, shooting three free throws. I think I'm gonna agree with that call. The fans weren't happy in the past, but I think that's a good call. Russo got decked as he went up for three. So he'll head to the line. He's got a chance to cut it down to a two-point game. Russo is 69% free throw shooter. That's the fifth foul on Mac Mirando. So he will be disqualified from this game. And I'm sure he's not happy to see that because he's a senior player and he's not gonna have a say on whether this is his last game or not in the final 312. As there's gonna be a delay in the action here. I'm not quite sure for what. As Rainix will check in for Mirando. Russo, three big free throws coming up. If he hits all three, Johnny's within. He'll be down, Bill Wayne Hills will be only down by two. Russo with 12 points on the evening. And his first one rattles out just a bit short for Joe Russo. He needs to hit these next two for Wayne Hills. Tries to tune out the crowd. Puts it up, and it's true. You could tell the second and left his hand that that ball was going in. Cuts it to a four-point game now, 59-55. If you remember, Anthony, Steve Lacarica went down hard in the first half. We were wondering if we were going to see him the rest of the night, and we definitely have seen him in this second half as he is trying to take over this game and has been pretty successful with that. As Russo's third free throw is good. Wayne Hills is going to have to have lockdown defense here as they get a strip there, but it's recovered, and Wayne Hills has the ball. Della Volpe goes to the floor, tries to call timeout, but they're going to call a jump ball before that. It'll go back to the Patriots, the possession arrow in their favor. 3.03 to play. Wayne Hills down by three. A three-pointer would tie it, but I'm sure any basket would be, would be good for the Patriots in this situation. Under three minutes now to go in this elimination playoff game. Forehand looking to make things happen. He's been pretty quiet tonight. Russo down low to Fonte who was not ready for the pass. A great look from Joey Russo. Coach Catalano not happy, but Fonte was not expecting that. And it went off his fingertips and out of bounds. A costly turnover for Wayne Hills. You have to be on your toes there, John. You gotta be ready for anything. This is the state championship. You gotta win. No question about that, Anthony. 
you need to be ready for any pass that may come your way as Nyland pulls up for three. That would have been a huge shot, but Russo pulls away the board and draws a blocking foul on Hauser. That's his fourth of the night, so he'll have to be careful. But Russo playing very hard down the stretch, as his whole team is now. 2.30 to play. Wayne Hill's extremely fortunate that Nyland did not hit that three, because that could have put away their season and their careers. Lacarica crosses up the defender, pulls up, and hits from 12 feet. Steve Lacarica is in the zone as he cuts it to a one-point game as West Milford having some difficulty getting the ball over midcourt as Lacarica steals it. Della Volpe is going to get knocked out of bounds. And that's his fifth, John. That is Rhode Island's fifth foul. Fifth foul. It's a push on Nylon. Great play by the... Wayne Hills guards Lacarica is going all out in this second half. Della Volpe picked up the ball and got knocked out of bounds. Good news for Wayne Hills, that's the seventh foul on West Milford. So Travis Della Volpe will go to the line shooting one and one. By my count, Della Volpe is four for eight from the line this evening. So he'll have very important shots on the way here with 2.06 to play, down by one. Here's what's at stake for Wayne Hills. As you see our road to JFK and the state finals. We've mentioned it before, Wayne Valley going out to Mount Olive. Many people wanted to see another Wayne Hills-Wayne Valley matchup. It was a long shot, but it didn't happen for the Patriots. So the winner of this will play the winner of Mount Olive and Sparta. But Wayne Hills can be looking ahead because Travis Della Volpe has two huge free throws to try to pull Wayne Hills into the lead down by just one. A huge front end of the one and one here. As Della Volpe focuses the best he can, puts it up, no good, rebounded by Joey Russo who puts it up, can't get it. They battle for the boards and they're gonna call a foul on Justin Horahan. That is his fourth, I believe. Oh man, that's a tough break for the Wayne Hills Patriots. With Della Volpe missing that free throw. Just a bit long. Russo battled for the board but couldn't get it. So with 2.01 to play, Wayne Hills trails by one. That was the fourth foul on Justin Horahan. As Wes Milford may look to burn some time here, Russo almost gets a steal. Wayne Hills' defense has been racking it up a notch and it's gonna be a double dribble on the Highlanders. Hills gets the ball right back with a chance to take the lead. The Goonies are going crazy right now, they, John. They haven't sat down since the first half, Anthony. The, both of these student sections have been on their feet the entire second half. They've been going at it in the bleachers, but back on the floor, Joey Russo has the ball. 130 to play in this playoff game. They get it down low to Fonte, lays it up, and then Wayne Hills takes the first lead of the game. Wayne Hills up 60, 59, 124 to go. West Milford fans are silent as they're trying to come back now. They have it inside. Stop oh, by Chase Chris Bonte. Bonte is feeling it now. He hit the go-ahead basket and comes back on the other end to stuff West Milford. John, Bonte is in the zone right now. Nobody's getting by. This is huge. You can feel the tension building here at Wayne Hills High School. Both of these teams have several seniors who, whose careers are on the line as we speak. 116 to play, Hills up by one for the first time tonight. Thompson with inside to a wide open Nyland for three, no good. Lacarica the board, they, the ball goes to the floor. Jump, jump ball to the Highlanders with 107 to play. Nyland has missed two huge threes to Wayne Hills' luck. John, it looked like they were calling time. Hills was calling timeout there. No call. Questionable. Steve had the ball in his hands, calling timeout. No call. That might cost him the game. With a minute and seven seconds left, John, if you're West Milford, what are you doing? Well, with no shot clock, it changes a lot uh, with, with the strategies of both teams because if you have the lead, you, ha you have an opportunity to just dribble out time, but that's hard to do with the defense in your throat as I'm sure they will be in this game. 
So it's an interesting call. If the team with a lead has the ball, it'll be interesting to see whether they attack and try to put more points on the board or if they sit back and try to keep, play keep away. So with Wayne Hills up by one, West Milford has the ball. Their coach diagramming a play. John, this is going to be interesting on what Wayne Hills does because Kennedy did the exact same thing as you were talking about there, holding the ball away, not dribbling it, wasted the clock, and they ended up winning that game. If Wayne Hills attacks on the defensive side, one of two things could happen. They could force a bad shot, or they could let someone get by them, and that could be two points on the board or three. Well, Anthony, we know these players have worked so hard in the weight room, in the gym. These guys are gym rats. They've trained for this their entire career, and all that training for both of these teams comes down to this final one minute and seven seconds. For one team, they'll move on to the semis. For the other team, their high school careers are over, at least for the seniors. As West Milford inbounds the ball, they drive, kick it out, Nyland wide open for three, and he hits it! Ron Nyland hits a clutch three and gives West Milford a two-point lead with 54 seconds to play. He missed two threes down the stretch and made up for it there, hitting a clutch three in the corner as West Milford fans are back up on their feet and making noise. Wayne Hills calls a timeout. Down by two, so the tables have turned, Anthony. West Milford had a timeout and they diagrammed the play and it worked to perfection. Now Wayne Hills is gonna have to do the same thing on their side, down by two with 52 seconds to go. If you're Coach Catalano, what are you telling your players? Defense, 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 defense. Do not let them get a shot. Do not let them get to the perimeter because that's where they are lethal. And if they get separation, make sure to cover Chris Fonte because if Hills has separation down low, they're going to get it to him. He's going to make a basket. Well, this possession by Wayne Hills coming off the timeout is going to be absolutely pivotal and vital for this, this turnout of this game. But I think it's worth mentioning that Justin Horahan has four fouls and Travis Delavope has three. Well, for Horahan, it'll be interesting to see if he's in the game, which he is for offense. But when Wayne Hills, if they can't score here, and they're gonna have to press West Milford and maybe foul, Horahan is not gonna be able to foul. And if he does, his game is over. And I'm sure he's not gonna wanna do that being a senior. Travis is going to inbound the ball. 52.6 seconds left in the game. You see the West Milford coach going berserk, trying to instruct his players, but Lacarica inbounds, the, gets the inbound, trying to take it himself on Rainix. Can't do it, gets it back to Russo, who drives up the middle. Charge on Joey Russo. West Milford has been upset with the officiating all night, but they get the call down the stretch as they call a charge on Joey Russo. A clutch draw by Wes Milford with 41 seconds to play as they inbound the ball now. Down low, foul on Chris Fonte. So now it's a free throw shooting game. Wes Milford has to hit their free throws if they want to win. Wade Hills will be looking to probably take a three, maybe get inside with still 41 seconds to go. As DeBlock comes out, Delavope will come back in with those, with that foul situation. So this is this free throw is way short, rebounded by Russo. So Wayne Hills has a good chance. Down by two, 34 seconds and counting. Travis Delavope looking to make a move, gets it to Jorge hands back to Lacarica, trying to make something happen on Rainix. He's a 1,000 point scorer, and he loses the ball. Rainix gets it back. Russo trying to rip it away, and they call a jump ball. It'll go back to Wayne Hills. Huge play by Joey Russo to get the ball back after Lacarica, the star, lost it. So Wayne Hills breathes a sigh of relief with 21.8 seconds to play. As the refs are trying to explain their call, John, to the West Milford coach who's been frantic all game with the foul calls. I mean, he's... <laughs> Calm down a little bit. Well, here we go, Anthony. 21 seconds to go. 
several high school careers on the line. Lacarica drives up the middle, puts it up, and they're gonna call a charge, I believe. Yes, a charge on Steve Lacarica. As the ref indicates, a charge on number 30. His third foul, but more importantly, West Milford gets the ball back with 15.6 seconds to play, up by two. DeBlock comes back in. He has fouls he can afford to make, as well as Mike Quinn, who will check into the game for Fonte. So Wayne Hill's trying to get quickness in to try to get a steal here. West John, Milford a steal inbounds. here could be... Long distance pass completed to Hauser. Lacarica makes the foul, his fourth now, so he's gonna have to be careful. But Hauser has the game in his hands. If he can hit these two free throws, it makes it a two possession game with just 13 seconds to go. It's gonna be awfully difficult for Wayne Hills to come back if he hits these, but it is a one in one. That's only the ninth team foul on Wayne Hills. So this is where the pressure will either get to you. This is where champions either fold or step up. This is Hauser shooting a one in one up by two. The first free throw. No good, rebounded by Chris Ponte. Wayne Hills is still alive. 10 seconds to play. Lacarica has it. Try to make a move on Reynix. He goes around his back. Four seconds to go. He puts it up. No good. Out of bounds to Wayne Hills with .4 seconds to go. Time out called. I believe, I would assume they're going to call a timeout. 1.1. Referee is indicating for Mr. Mezzi to put 1.1 seconds John, on the clock. This could be extremely interesting because I have seen first person a, an alley oop to Justin Horahan over the top. Now, that would be extremely unlikely. But if they can get it up, if he has some space, he can get up and throw it down. Do you think they would even think about that? I think it might cross their minds, but I don't think they'd have the guts to call that play. There is 1.1, so Wayne Hills' season was very much in jeopardy if they had left it at point four. But fortunately for Hills, the ref had his eye on the clock and was able to put 1.1 seconds on there. So 1.1 is just enough time for Wayne Hills to catch and shoot you're obviously gonna look for Lacarica or Russo to take it. There's no question about that. But who else, is out, who else is gonna be in the game? We don't know. I'd expect Mike Quinn to be in there, perhaps, for quickness, and maybe to set a screen, or Fonte could be in there to set a screen. But it'll be very interesting to see if Wayne Hills is able to step up in this situation. It'll be interesting to see who takes the inbound, because it's gonna have to be a very tight pass as Wes Milford breaks the huddle, and this entire gym is on their feet now. 1.1 to play, Fonte is on the bench, Mike Quinn in the game. Lacarica, Jorahan, Della Volpe, and Russo, seniors, their career on the line, down by two, 1.1 seconds to play. They have a stack set up, Quinn can't get it to Lacarica, he throws it deep to Della Volpe, who's gonna take a half court shot that falls way short. And Wayne Hills' season ends in disappointing fashion as West Milford wins in style as their student section is ready to storm the court here at Wayne Hills. A very disappointing end to an excellent basketball season. These boys, I'm sure, are very disappointed. They've had great careers, all of them. They've played here at Wayne Hills on varsity for three, four years now as they attempt to shake hands amongst the madness here. But these kids have fought so hard. They've dedicated so much of their time to this program. And for the seniors, this is it. Steve Lacarica, a 1,000 point scorer. Joe Russo also may be a 1,000 point scorer. I'm not quite sure. He is, I'm informed. These guys are, are Wayne Hills basketball legends. And for their career to end like this, it's not just disappointing for them, but for the Wayne Hill student body, for us as announcers, for the parents, everyone that is involved in this school, it's just, it's just not the way you want your season to end. But hey, they had a good run. They've had very memorable moments here at Wayne Hills over the last three years. Anthony, your thoughts on the game and the situation overall? 
John, I, I'm kind of speechless. I'm not going to lie. I mean, they had this game locked up from the start. They forced too many shots down low. They forced too many shots out wide. They, they forced too many passes everywhere. Just just a monumental loss. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, the only word I can think of right now is disappointing. But the team will regroup, they'll reload, as the football team says, their, their little motto. They do return some players who had big minutes, like Chris Fonte, of course will anchor the team next year as center, as well as Joe Brandle, Mike Quinn, Matt DeBlock, Matt Heskins, a bunch of sophomores will step up next year for this team. It'll be interesting how they do in the future, but for the seniors, this was their final game. They will head, hopefully, into a college career, but you never know. So from the Gifford Gymnasium, for Anthony Scadillo, I am John Vitas, the Katin brothers, everyone that made this production possible, Mr. Hookstraight, Dan Cohen, Max Zager, whoever I may be forgetting, I'm sorry, Matt Trainer. This has been a Wayne Hills production. This is John Vitas signing off.